Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for clicking on another video. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about foundation year one, the first year of being a doctor after medical school. Hot dang, have I got tips to share. Oh, hot dang, it's been, it's been quite the year. So yeah, if you are a recent graduate, number one, congratulations, freaking relations. Well done, hot dang, high five. Come on, don't leave me hanging, high five, yes. It is a huge achievement to graduate from med school. I'm so proud of you and I, I don't even know who is watching this, but I'm so freaking proud of you if you've graduated from med school, that's amazing. Um, you're in for an exciting year. As a British doctor and someone who has done her foundation year one training in Wales. To be honest, there isn't too much difference from England. Here's a load of stuff that I wish I'd known. I wish I'd known before I started foundation and that I think it'll be really helpful for you to keep in mind through what is about to be one of the most eye-opening and exciting years of your life. Life. Are you ready? I feel like I want a cuppa. Do I want a cuppa? No, I want a bottle of water. I'm gonna grab a bottle of water, okay? That's another tip. That's tip number one. Stay hydrated on the job. They say no drinking on the wards. Keep a bottle of water with you, especially for on calls, because otherwise by the end of the day, you'll have an AKI yourself. And that ain't the plan, hen. That ain't the plan. <laughs> number one tip is to give yourself time, number one. So the first few weeks of F1 are so much more of a learning curve than just your first year working as a real life doctor. Actually, it's finding out where stroke rehab unit is, how to request a scan in your hospital, who to bleep to get a central line fitted, and all this random stuff that will differ from health board to health board to hospital to hospital. Especially for me, having trained in Birmingham, then moving to Wales, like they do things very differently here. So there was minimal crossover so give yourself time to learn how to actually do the bits of the job there's a lot of admin and one thing they can't really teach you in med school is that is the admin and, and your job as a house officer is a heck of a lot of admin so give yourself time to learn that the great thing is that everyone knows that the jump from medical school to working as a doctor is a huge step it's a huge step it's kind of like from college to uni um except with like responsibility and consequences and stuff um not to scare you or anything but it is a big step and everyone knows that so all your seniors they expect you to be pretty below average they're not expecting that much all they're expecting is for you to be energetic and keen to actually learn how to do stuff so if you don't know how to book a certain scan that's fine that's absolutely fine just ask someone and also giving yourself time to get energy for life for like the nine to five or the eight till ten or whatever hours you're working and so what I found was going from summer holidays because that's essentially what you've been on to working full-time non-stop this isn't like placement where you can go home at 2 p.m oh no <laughs> no it takes it out of you it's tiring to start with so suddenly starting to work full-time is tiring so give yourself time to sleep to adjust it's normal you don't have to be some superhuman you're allowed a mo okay Okay. Oh, cr <laughs> oh, I didn't highlight my shoulders. I feel like I could have. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Even if it's only mental, it makes a difference to me. Yes, pop in. Pop. Pop in. My second tip, which took me way too long to learn, is that you are in training. You're in training. You're essentially, I would say still in medical school, but you're essentially still learning. Like, you're literally in training. You're there not to know everything a consultant knows. But to get to the stage and learn enough and set the foundation, literally the foundation, so that one day you will know how much a consultant knows and you will know how much the all-encompassing God-sent medical registrar on call knows. And you might be thinking, well, that is called foundation training, hun. But there is a lot of pressure on the healthcare system, a lot of pressure on the NHS. And when I say pressure, I don't mean like people are putting pressure on it. I mean that it's understaffed. It's understaffed and there will be a lot of pressure on you to provide service provision, and that is part of your training. Your teaching and your study leave and all the rest of it is what you're there for as well. So I know so many times when I've had colleagues and myself not be able to go to teaching because we're needed on the ward. Not necessarily like emergency needed on the ward, but just kind of the day-to-day -day tasks needed on the ward. 
always, always go to your teaching. Find a way, prioritise it, prioritise it to your seniors, which I know can be daunting. It can be daunting to say to your red, oh, actually, do you mind being on your own for a couple of hours because I've got this teaching? The really helpful and good ones will encourage that. They'll, they'll take your bleep off you and hold your bleep and be like, go to teaching. Don't feel guilty for training because actually that is what's going to make you a better doctor and that is what is going to take you to the next level. If you didn't do any extra reading, if you didn't do any audits, then we wouldn't really get very far we won't progress as medics so don't feel like you have to sit on the ward doing tth after tth writing drug chart after drug chart if you have teaching prioritize that because you are a foundation year trainee not a foundation service provider even though service providing is part of your training your training is super important and for me i just i literally that took me like six months to learn until i was like actually do you know what i'm not gonna and I'm, I'm actually gonna mention teaching like a week in advance so everyone knows that actually this Thursday afternoon I won't be on the ward because I have teaching I need to learn okay so yeah don't be robbed get your knowledge number three oh my goodness I wish I really if you watch this and you find this helpful please share it with a friend who's going into foundation because these are honestly like so close to my heart right now having just done foundation year and the other day the next deaf one who's going to be taking over my job came onto the ward and I was like oh my gosh there's so much I want to tell you about what's to come. Like I literally spent like an hour in the morning telling her everything about what to expect. These are really helpful. So please tag a friend, share it with a friend, whatever. My third tip is to look after your mental health. Please look after your mental health. And you might be thinking again, that's a bit obvious. Maybe you've never struggled with your mental health. Maybe you've never had depression or anxiety or, or anything like that. And the reason I put this in there is because neither had I. <laughs> I mean, I'd had like bouts of like, you know, everyone has life issues that happen to them, but I'd never had this kind of um, relentless anxiety and fear, which I experienced uh, halfway through F1. And I wasn't the only one to experience it. When you think about it, you're going, there's not really, it's hard to prepare yourself to being on the front line, essentially, of a lot of, of, of tragedy and, and ill health and um, sad situations. Yes, we can help people and stuff. Sometimes there is loss and there is tragedy and assuming that you will just cope with that seamlessly, um, maybe you will, maybe you will, but, but don't put pressure on yourself too. Actually, it's really common to feel like crap. <laughs> it's really common to feel anxious and down and depressed and I really encourage you to recognise those symptoms in yourself and to speak to someone. I can't express how much it helped me to speak to someone. Um, I remember a time when me and my colleague, and also your colleagues are everything, like speak to them, make friends with them and, and tell them how you're feeling, tell them when you're struggling, speak to a professional, speak to your GP, just say it, don't just bottle it up and feel like, oh, it's just part of the job, I can power through, like, no, you have to be okay. You can't help people if you yourself can't cope if you can't get out of bed in the morning because you're too depressed you won't be able to treat anyone so make sure you look after yourself make sure you look after yourself physically emotionally and mentally um so one of my colleagues who i worked with who i really just adore she's great um we lost a patient who had been on the ward for several months and it was this crash call it was the first time doing a crash call that i had felt the ribs crack personally um and it was on a patient like i remember looking in her eyes and thinking come on come on I've seen you every day for the last two months come on and and it was it was it was deep it was deep and it was tough and um, it all happened really fast we got her back a couple of times um, and we lost her and actually I ended up having to be the one to talk to the family and that was tough too we had a little debrief after the session um, but it wasn't much <laughs> we had a debrief for about 10 minutes with the crash team um and then we went back to work and we're seeing patients and treating other sick people on the ward and then my friend messaged later on just being like i can't cope and and i was like yeah me neither and our, our sho was like yep yeah, can't cope and we kind of just talked about it and um, and that helped a bit i'd gone home and i had written a poem um which i shared with you guys actually it's on my blog you can go and see it it's on my blog and it was just everything that i'd felt during that crash call and um 
and that helped me it really helped me to write so whatever you know we put those things on our cv about oh yeah i release my stress by going to the gym like literally how do you release your stress because you're going to have to utilize those i find that i release mine by writing a lot a lot i've written a lot of poems i've sung a lot of songs on my guitar like that helps me that helps me to process stuff it helps me to talk about these things so don't just have it on the cv actually utilize your coping mechanisms and your stress relieving mechanisms um, and be there for each other don't be a hero look after your mental health You're not there to carry the burdens of the world no one person can do that um, so don't don't even try okay okay my fourth tip is a little bit different is to organize your leave early so organize your leave early my first job was a crazy road set and actually i worked out i sat down and looked at the road set and i said if everyone took the leave that they were entitled to on this job the wards would be understaffed so actually sometimes the rotors are such that you can't mathematically all get your leave so what i highly recommend that you do is in the first okay give yourself like a week to settle but in like the next over the next two weeks choose when you want your leave discuss it with your team and book it in what a lot of my colleagues did on their first job is that they didn't so my, i was lucky because my sho made us all sit down straight away and book our leave and was like right when do you want when do you want when do you want and we were sorted our team was always covered um, and actually it was the other teams on the surgical rotation who found that they couldn't take the leave be organized look at the road in advance and book your leave because hands it's a wonderful job but you do need time to recover and recuperate my fifth tip is to be nice as my maths teacher used to chant at us and get us to repeat what do good manners cost? Nothing. Be nice. Be nice to everyone. Particularly the nurses, the experienced nurses on your wards. They know where everything is. They're fab. They're great. Just be nice. Be nice and be humble. My next tip is to enjoy it. This is what you've worked for. <laughs> this is what you worked for. Enjoy it. Those moments with patients that well i don't know about you maybe for some of you i know that medics are like a spectrum are actually on the spectrum so for me anyway what i love are those moments of patient contact where i'm connecting with patients and talking to them and explaining things and reassuring them consoling them just being there for patients i absolutely adore whatever it is that you enjoy maybe it's surgery you know whatever it is in medicine that you enjoy take time to enjoy it and like live your best life you're a doctor you've earned this you're gonna get so much better as you go along like even me i know that i still have a long way to go and by god's grace i continue improving as a doctor but my clinical judgment clinical judgment by the way is something that you develop not necessarily something that you can learn in med school you develop it by seeing patient after patient after patient after patient you develop your own sense of clinical judgment and being able to tell how sick one patient is with the other patient being able to interpret signs and symptoms and your examination skills will just will just get so much better it's so much different being in an oski exam and listening and seeing if you can hear crackles or whatever it's actually being in real life at 3 a.m and trying to examine a patient to figure whether they need emergency surgery or antibiotics will do um, not that you'll ever be the one making that call as an f1 but do you know what i mean developing that kind of um clinical judgment my seventh and final tip is to make friends surround yourself with colleagues and people medicine is actually a really special career in that you're constantly moving rotations which at first might sound like a bit of a faff but it's great because you get to work with so many different people you get to meet so many different people you have so much opportunity to make new friends so in other people with their jobs they go into an office and they stay in the same office with the same people until someone quits or someone new gets hired whereas you are constantly networking and mixing with people and i encourage you to make friends with your colleagues go for drinks after work hang out with them arrange events because they'll get you through i've had some colleagues this year who i know are going to be friends for life and i'm so so grateful for that so don't even though everything can be a bit cray don't withdraw don't seclude yourself like i did at some points get involved and stay involved and be social thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave me a comment if you're someone who's been through F1, maybe you're a reg, consultant, I don't know, leave your tips down below for all the new doctors who are starting over the next few weeks. Um, leave me a comment letting me know any tips for my years to come. Uh, and let's just support each other and help each other. A huge congrats again to all the new F1 doctors and a huge good luck for your career. You are going to be amazing. Don't stress, you've got this.
I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. Bye.